practical, patient, gentle, and service-oriented temperaments, which generally manifest as supremely reasonable and dedicated, albeit quite and somewhat reserved, individuals. They possess excellent attention to detail and are always dutiful about doing the small things, little acts designed to strengthen and assist others. It's going to be a long night. You look great, Doctor. They value stability and cultural norms and have a strong need for group harmony. They are keenly aware that they are part of a larger system and instinctually understand how their actions affect those around them and their group as a whole. Shiver! Shh! Go! You shouldn't be here! Neither should you. You're sneaking out again, aren't you? Now, Neville, listen. We would... No! We were... I won't let you! You'll get Gryffindor into trouble again. Like all the videos in this series, I aim to get you inside your character's head in order to assist you in portraying fictional characters that feel real, identifiable, and organic by outlining each of the 16 Union personality archetypes. However, this will only give you an outline and a personality type does not a character make. Hopefully by the end of this video, you will better understand how the ISFJ processes and values information and how this affects their behavior, decision-making, and communication style, so you can then add motivations, backstory, interests, relationships, and likely personality quirks to result in a more organically complete character that your audience will connect with. I'll give you the outline, and then you can fill it in. If your ISFJ character had a favorite saying, it would probably be, it's the thought that counts, or if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. They thrive in an environment where their role and what others expect of them is clearly established and is well known by all. They are exceptionally driven to do what is expected of them and to fulfill their duties in life, whatever those duties may be. They like having a map to guide them, but generally have little desire to make the map so they will almost always end up following along with a more assertive personality. ISFJs are exceptionally good at following orders and are driven to act based upon what they should do, not based upon what they want to do. Have you ever considered that you ask too much, that you take too much for granted? Has it ever crossed your brilliant mind that I don't want to do this anymore? Whether it has or hasn't is irrelevant. Not negotiate with you, Severus. You agreed. Nothing more to discuss. ISFJs rarely know or care what they personally want and genuinely find fulfillment and happiness in fulfilling their duty. So they are almost always traditionalists and will have a strong protective instinct toward all things familiar and socially comfortable. It's very nice, but I don't think so. Mm, my, we are conservative, aren't we? No, not really, just old-fashioned. This manifests in their passionate sense of justice and fair play and their sincere desire to nurture and support the people around them. ISFJs have exceptionally good memories and primarily analyze the world around them by comparing the new and novel to their own past experiences and specifically to how those past experiences affected them and how they felt about them. This results in a quiet individual who needs time to process new experiences and to sort out what these new experiences mean and how they fit into the ISFJ's inner world. This means they will withdraw from novel and stressful situations after only a short time in order to think about their feelings. But once that process is complete, the ISFJ can be capable of profound realizations about their environment and about those around them. I think that We're all in our private traps, clamped in them, and none of us can ever get out. We scratch and, and claw, but only at the air, only at each other. Puffy's like nobody else in the world. When I'm with her, it's like, it's like I'm splitting two. Half of me is just on fire, going crazy if I'm not touching her. The other half is so still and peaceful, just perfectly content, just knows this is the one. 
but she doesn't love me. They show affection by being of service to those they care for, and this service almost always takes the form of a caring simplicity and unassumingness that others find heartwarming and almost painfully endearing. You can expect many small acts that speak to the ISFJ's keen understanding and quiet attention that they pay to those they care about. For the ISFJ, dedication is not about making grand gestures, but instead about concrete practicalities and everyday needs, such as, for instance, diligently working to make sure their family is always provided with regular healthy meals, or by making sure their environment is always clean, or by being exceptionally diligent in matters of security and safety. Elise, please be careful. They tend to be very faith-based and can feel a call to the structure, community, and traditionalism that a well-established, faith-based environment brings. This can take the form of their environment's dominant religion, but it can also manifest in things like faith in the legal system or law enforcement, or faith in an established code of conduct of a group of outlaws, if that is their environment, or faith in the rightful transference of power in a traditional monarchy-type government. ISFJs are usually devout followers of whatever the dominant religion or faith-based system of their environment is. And you seem to be obedient to your sheriff. For the most part. When it matters, yes, he is. And are more adaptable to new environments if they are able to transfer that devotion onto a new faith be it faith in a new religion or faith in a new leader. Blood of my blood. ISFJs are adept at taking in the social norms of their environment, and it is in fact this very trait of being able to breathe in and breathe out an alien culture that not only makes them exceptionally adaptable to new environments and to earning the trust of strangers easily, but which also makes them prone to changing allegiances as well. ISFJs have a profound respect for manners and etiquette, and when others disregard these proper social niceties, the ISFJ will often become annoyed in an indignant way. For all their quiet service, the ISFJ is rarely tolerant of being disrespected or of standing by while their sense of what is right is being violated. Atherton, language. After I raise my armies and kill your traitor brother, I'm going to give you his head as well. Or maybe he'll give me yours. They will respond with a stubborn pushback that is at once seemingly irrational, yet so dignified that they can cause even the most gentle non-confrontationalist to question their own ethical core. Thank Don't lie to me. Because their sense of morality and propriety comes from observing and absorbing what their society holds to be moral and proper, any violation of these tenets will result in a reaction not of personal passion, but of frustration with the violator's blindness to what is to them plainly obvious as good and right. Well, uh... One of the virtues of not being puritanical about sex is not feeling embarrassed afterwards. You should look into it. Having said that, the ISFJ is not a conformist per se, but typically does show a strong pull towards it. The ISFJ feels a drive to serve a purpose higher than themselves, and they instinctually look outside of themselves to discover what holds value. To them, their sense of morality is not a personally held belief, but instead objective and self-evident truths that they discover from observing others. They will and do act outside their own cultural norms if they feel the norm somehow contradicts the moral and the proper. This is my blood, woman. No, this is your blood. Now you hand that child over nice and slow, or I'll spill more than you can spare. You're a part of your family. And I'll do anything. Whatever it takes to get them to accept me. Because you're my life now. You're my whole life now. I'm not going to skulk off and get married as if we're ashamed of ourselves. A good example of this dichotomy is the classic story of Disney's Cinderella. 
Like the stereotypical image of an ISFJ, Cinderella is usually dismissed as a pushover with a pretty face and very little going on between her ears. She is portrayed as a blissfully airheaded follower who diligently does whatever she is told to do while tolerating abuse and allowing herself to be treated as a slave within her own home. But Cinderella is no weakling and in fact shows incredible strength of character. She is not ignorant of how she is being mistreated and is well aware that she is not being treated fairly. Even he orders me around. However, Cinderella lives in a world where very few options are available to her. This is not a world with ample women's shelters and job training. She spells out this dilemma while talking with the family dog and reveals that her conformity is a very conscious and rational choice that makes the best of a bad situation. You know the orders. So if you don't want to lose a nice warm bed, you'd better get rid of those dreams. Know how? Just learn to like cats. She has thought this through and has come to a rational conclusion. Cinderella has made the conscious choice to remain cheerful, optimistic, and upbeat in the face of constant adversity and abuse. And in this she shows the ISFJ's extraordinary emotional intelligence. Why should we live in misery when it's within our power to not? The ISFJ instinctively knows that they may not be able to control outside factors, but they can control how they respond to them. So Cinderella keeps a smile on her face. She sings as she works. She takes pride in her appearance and in her room, even though she is only given old threadbare clothes and blankets to utilize. And she holds herself with dignity and class. While Cinderella diligently follows the orders dictated to her by her abusers, we never see her going above and beyond that in order to serve them. She works only to keep herself safe in that regard. What we do see, however, is Cinderella going out of her way at every opportunity to care for the animals around her with resourcefulness, practicality, and kindness. They show their appreciation to her by helping her with her daily routine and by fixing up her dress when she is unable. In this way, Cinderella builds a community around herself based on mutual aid and respect, and far from being rescued by a prince, who is completely absent from this segment of the story, it is the community that she has diligently built up over years that ends up taking advantage of the opportunity to ensure Cinderella's escape. Had she possessed less emotional intelligence, had she not been as strong of a character, had she been beaten down over the years, then it's unlikely that so many of those around her would have been willing to risk their own lives and safety in order to help her. These are the defining characteristics of the ISFJ, their exceptional emotional intelligence and their extraordinary talent at building communities. Because of their deep understanding of how communities and relationships are built, ISFJs do not value independence the way many other personality types do. They value interdependence. They value openness and being able to depend on those around them, and they value being depended upon by others. Even something they could easily do on their own, like getting ready in the morning, can through interdependence and sharing be made into a relationship building exercise that builds trust and healthy dependency. No one is an island. No one can do it all in life. So why fight the need to depend on others? No one can survive in this world without help. No one. Let me help you. This is not to say that they do not admire more aggressively independent traits in others. Only that a more independent way of life is not something that calls to them or makes sense to them personally. You're in charge. You're like, make the plan, execute the plan. No one giving you orders. I'm the Slayer. I like it. ISFJs are often uncomfortable when asked to take an intuitive leap or to conjecture on what may happen in a given situation. They tend to choose their words carefully and have an innate sense that whatever they offer should be compared and checked against all their previous experiences on the matter so that they can be sure to get it right. 
They instinctively hold on to detail and postulating about how a theoretical outcome too far into the unknown can create anxiety because it's simply too many details to keep track of. Thus, if they have decided to do something outside of a preset cultural norm where all duties and expectations and a very clear path is already laid out for them, they will usually choose to follow and support someone else who is more comfortable conjecturing about the unknown future or about how a sequence of events will play out. This discomfort with making plans can also manifest in more mundane ways. The ISFJ wants to fulfill their duty and then move on so they can work hard at fulfilling their next duty. While they are very good at keeping track of all the details they need to keep track of in order to get the job done, having to explain that process or spell out each step can be stressful to them. While they are quite capable of and happy to teach others when they have time to prepare or when a lesson plan is already spelled out, being asked to show their work or to walk someone else through the process on the fly can be incredibly stressful for them. Having to make tough decisions that affect others, even in this small way, goes against their instincts. ISFJs utilize an informative style of communication. Context is important to them, so they will generally try to provide more information when speaking rather than being economical with their words. However, they are very mindful of what they do say and are unlikely to jabber on endlessly. She's a very young vampire. At her age, with her impulses, she could be quite dangerous. Where has she been tonight? Here with me and before that with Eric and Pam. So there's no way she could have anything to do with the woman at Merlot's with her heart missing? No. Probably not. I know what Ramsey is. I know what he'll do to me. If I'm going to die, let it happen while there's still some of me left. Buffy, can we talk about this later? There's a dangerous hostel out here, and well, since I don't have your reflexes, I kind of need to focus. A rather rare herb, giddy weed. Not something found in your everyday garden. Nor is this. Know what it is? Bubble juice, sir. Veritas serum. Three drops of this, and you know who himself would spill his darkest secrets. The use of it on a student is regrettably forbidden. However, should you ever steal from my personal stores again, my hand might just slip over your morning pumpkin. These people like me, and I like them. I like Atherton, too, by the way. Well, sure. What's not to like? I'm liable to sleep with him myself. And he likes me, whether you see it or not. Of course. He's made me an offer. You may think he doesn't honor me, but he wants me to live here. I'd be his personal companion. I could belong here. Call me pretentious, but there is some appeal in that. Paradoxically, they do have a habit of telling the same stories again and again, or explaining things to people who clearly already know about these things. ISFJs tend to have a blind spot about what other people are thinking, and this is generally how it manifests. Well, you know everything about me then. I'm a pretty strong vegetarian teacher. Uh, drink. Neville, I didn't get into the slug club. Their humor is typically rigid but playfully dry and will often take the form of trumped up mundane issues of propriety or minor wrongdoings in a dry, heavy handed parody sort of way. People say they're recycling. They're not recycling. Unless you wish to poison him, and I assure you I would have the greatest sympathy if you did. I cannot help you. Leave tonight, I beg you. And what is she to do for soldiers? We can find cellsorts in Pentos and Mir. Is it we already, Sir Barristan? Don't worry about Sam, he's cool. I know for a fact he supports the Vampire Rights Amendment. How progressive of him. 
Uh, excuse me. Try not to be too loud. But perhaps the dining area isn't the place for this sort of thing. What do you mean? It's the only place at the table big enough. Of course. In that case, every well-bred petty crook knows that the small concealable weapons always go to the far left of the place setting. And unlike other personality types who will often use humor as a way to break the ice, ISFJs typically will not display their humor until they are familiar and comfortable with those around them. Theirs is a reserved humor, and one which is often overshadowed by other, more flashy personality types. Tell me, do you enjoy it living halfway up his backside the way you do? Yes, it's nice. You should try it. ISFJs also have an inherent reluctance to try out new ways of doing things, and this may manifest as an anxiety about having to change routines. They have an inherent distrust about the stability of the future and about the intangible what-ifs in life. They seek to quiet these fears by being dutiful and hardworking and by always fulfilling their expected role in life so as best to prepare for the unexpected. When stressed, the ISFJ is likely to be consumed with intangible what-if thoughts, questions, and concerns. Their problem-solving tends to take the form of figuring out what the tried-and-true method of the problem is and then going with that, but when there is no set response, they are more likely to favor anecdotal evidence rather than a large set of dry data or statistics. ISFJ connect best with new information when it has a human element. When it comes from someone they value, or when it has been told to them in the form of a story. What? I woke up with this huge zit this morning. Where? There. I had a huge zit this morning. You did? Yeah. Where is it? Well, it was right here, but it's gone. Why? I put some Windex on. In this way, the information has life and color breathed into it, versus the dry cold and dull rawness of objective data. They also fear that they lack sufficient honor and have not worked hard enough or shown enough dedication and loyalty to be worthy of the things that more deserving people are worthy of. This can manifest in an overcompensation of their sense of justice. If anyone, even a member of their own family, has broken the social rules and disrupted the harmony of the group, the ISFJ is prone to lashing out and prioritizing the idea or image of the group or family more than the actual individuals that comprise the group or the family. While it will generally take a large infraction to trigger this reaction, the ISFJ's response is still prone to being disproportional and disruptors may be banished from the group or severely punished beyond any reasonable level. The ISFJ villain will be driven to protect the idea of their group or family more than they will be driven to protecting the actual flesh and bone members of their group or family and in their minds they will be punishing the other for their own good. You fucking traitor. I'm doing this for you. When immature they can be exceptionally vindictive and, if stuck in unhealthy habits, you can expect them to become a walking self-fulfilling prophecy. They will be so paranoid that those around them will betray them or will betray their group or their ideals at some point in the future that the ISFJ will preemptively lash out against that person to the extreme, which, of course, will cause the other person to abandon and betray the ISFJ and just reinforce their unhealthy beliefs. You'd know that you were being used, that you, you wouldn't be made a fool of, would you? But I'm not a fool. Well, I'm, And I'm not capable of being fooled, not, not even by a woman. ISFJs have very little practice at accurately predicting what those around them are thinking and what they are going to do and may jump to conclusions usually negative and hurtful conclusions, about what is going to happen. Their need to prepare for the unknown and scary future will compel them to develop contingency plans based on what they perceive is going on around them. Very often, in their mind, this will mean banishing or punishing the individual before they can hurt or betray the group or ISFJ. 
In their minds, even with all their devotion and hard work, the ISFJ is still not worthy or honorable enough or respectable enough, and thus they deserve punishment. No one can know. But I should never reveal the best of you, sir. Your word. And you risk your life every day to protect the boys. It is not uncommon for ISFJs to find themselves in and to tolerate physically abusive relationships because a loud part of them believes that they deserve it. And if they deserve punishment with all of their work and devotion, then most certainly those around them do as well. Add in a religion or a regime which encourages this line of thinking and gives them a structured outlet for it, and you can get some seriously twisted antagonists. You've been chosen by Lilith. This is what God wants. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have found this video valuable. I'll be posting this series every Thursday, so if there is a personality type you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below, and I'll try to move it up in the schedule. After we get through all 16 archetypes, I'll be posting a few videos on how to determine which personality type would work best for your story based on the type of story you are telling and what you need that particular character to do within the story. So hit the subscribe button if that's something you would like to see. Until then, thank you again and have a great day.